In 2017, you would think that we would have overcome the insurmountable machine of racism. But four years after Fruitvale Station was released, and eight years after the death of Oscar Grant, it's evident that everything in this movie still resonates. Fruitvale Station is a movie about the last 24 hours in the life of Oscar Grant, a 22-year-old man from Oakland, California, who was killed at the hands of a police officer in 2009 at the Fruitvale BART Station in East Oakland. The cinematography of this film and moments is spot on. This film is meticulously composed as the story of Oscar's last day is told over the course of the film. The main goal of director Ryan Coogler is to show just how holistically human Oscar was even up until the moment of his death. And Coogler does an amazing job at accomplishing that. It's really like unlike any other movie I've ever seen. And three, 10, 45 years down the line, the movie is still gonna resonate the same exact way as it does now and as it did when it first came out. I was pretty confident in my ability to find a good movie until I stumbled upon Table 19. Directed by Jeffrey Blitz and co-written by Mark and Jay Duplass, Table 19 centers on ex-maid of honor Eloise, played by Anna Kendrick, as she attends the wedding of her oldest friend Francie. The movie takes a dark turn when Eloise arrives at the wedding and meets her table mates at, wait for it, Table 19. The people seated at this table are known to the bride and groom as randoms, and better yet, those who should have known to send their regrets. The whole movie is centered around the wedding, which I'm sure wasn't intended to go on for days, but it looks like it. Save yourself an hour and 27 minutes and don't watch this terribly thought out and just bad movie. Mother Teresa said, do you know your next door neighbor? You might not want to after watching Arlington Road. The film's excellence comes from the acting and music. Bridges' appearance and demeanor in the later stages of the movie truly show the viewers that his obsession has, in every sense, taken over his life. Excuse me, Mr. Faraday? The scene introduces what will become a recurring theme in the movie, deft use of foreshadowing. Certain lines of dialogue, scenes, and subtle hints all become extremely clear at the end, when the viewer inevitably gasps, realizing the true meaning of things that were previously simply throwaway lines. Or pay for those actions. I think we should put some of these politicians in jail. And I believe it is definitely worth watching, not once, but twice, in order to truly appreciate it. It's Friday night, and as everyone knows, you don't do homework on Friday night. So, you decide to watch a movie. But, what should you watch? Hmm. Oh. What's this? Coin heist? I mean... With Netflix producing shows like Beasts of No Nation, Masters of None, and The Get Down, this has to be good, right? Right? Hold up. Coin Heist is a Netflix original movie, written and directed by Emily Hagens, that came out in early 2017. Based upon the book by Eliza Ludwig, the story follows Jason, Dakota, Alice, and Benny as they attempt to save their school which had recently lost its funding, by sticking into the U.S. Mint, creating an altered coin, and then selling it at a high price to coin collectors. The story, while I feel is rushed, is an interesting concept. High school heist movies can be a really fun time, even if they aren't entirely practical. For a back alley Netflix movie, I wasn't expecting much, but at least it kept my attention. It's not bad enough to tell you to not watch it, but it's not good enough to tell you you should. Risky Business is a movie filled with comedic action and thrilling drama. The acting performances from the lead roles of Tom Cruise and Rebecca De Mornay are amazing. This movie shows the pressures and expectations of high school through the life of a senior going to college. The story, in my opinion, is the best part about the movie because the audience gets to see Joel's personality change throughout the movie. I wish the movie would have delved more into Joel's involvement in the fu Future Enterprises Club because those scenes in the movie were what really showed Joel's per personality. Overall, Risky Business is a great movie because of its acting performances, relatable story, and wonderful soundtrack.
Öncelikle Emily'nin karakteriyle kendimi çok fazla bağdaştırdım. Ve o yüzden de e, Emily çok e, unik ve çok naif bir karakteri var. E, bize tamamıyla Fransız kültürünü yansıtabiliyorlar. Film, film boyunca e, belli bir ışıklandırma var ve bu ışıklandırma hiçbir şekilde değişmiyor. Hep aynı şekilde ilerliyor ve bu da bize Fransız havasını daha fazla yansıtıyor. Ama bazı durumlarda filmdeki bağlantıları sağlamak çok zor. Çünkü filmin başında verilmiş olan bir karakter filmin sonunda daha farklı bir şekilde gösterildiği için o bağlantıyı kurmak biraz zorlaşıyor. Onun dışında bu filmi herkese öneriyorum. Çünkü diğer filmlerden farklı olarak konusu daha farklı bir şekilde iletilmiş. Işıklandırma, kostümler, karakterler her şey daha farklı bir şekilde ilerliyor. Yani bu çok basic bir film de olabilirken çok güzel şekilde ve çok yaratıcı bir şekilde ele alınmış. Ve teşekkür ediyorum. Teşekkür Faithful Findings is a bad movie. However, is it a good bad movie? That's hard to tell. Faithful Finding is the story of fantasy Neil Breen, a genius hacker who can hack anything, even government secrets. He is a great burden that consists of a magic, cancer-curing rock, which haunts him, his wife, and his childhood friend. For one thing, Neil Breen is either completely incompetent or just doesn't care at all about making a quality film. Throughout the movie, stock footage is used as establishing or introduction shots, and the same stock music tracks are played repeatedly throughout the film, which overall lowers the quality of the movie, as Breen seemingly didn't care enough to use actual music. The line delivery of Breen... I'm going to continue hacking into these government systems to see what I can find out. ...and the other actors is terrible. Yep. I still can't believe you're up and around so fast. Well, yep, beautiful. The ending of Fateful Findings is very strange. Fantasy Neil Breen releases all the government secrets he's unearthed, and we're then shown a montage of corrupt politicians and corporate figures committing suicide because their lives have been ruined. Ultimately, if you're a movie masochist and you like movies that are so bad that they hurt, Fateful Findings is for you. The following is a fact. The greatest action movie ever created was in 2009. Can you guess this movie? It's all facts, no opinions. The movie is Take. Taken is a legend action movie starring Liam Neeson. His amazing acting brings audiences on the edge of their seat in a thrill-seeking movie. In his masterpiece, Neeson plays Brian Mills and is put on deck as he searches for his daughter Kim, played by Maggie Grace, in the undiscovered world of sex trafficking in Europe. Remember that line? I will find you. And I will kill you. Well, Neeson pretty much started that entire phenomenon. <laughs> Now, the next part is very important. They are going to take you. <laughs> this scene brought a whole new reality to the situation and had a shifting turn into what was happening. Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a rating of 5.8, but if it were me, I would give this movie a 9 out of 10. Hello there. Today we're going to be reviewing Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress, released in 1959. This film was released 20 years after The Wizard of Oz and 20 years after the ability to make color film projected in movie theaters. The message, the tone, and the enjoyment of this film are not cut down at all by the lack of color. It is never missed and is never needed. The movie starts off with two men in ragged clothing walking down a road. Misa Uehara gives a powerful and moving performance throughout most of this film. But the greatest performance is definitely the uh, General Rokuroda Makabe. Highlights of this film is the costuming and choreography. Even though the makeup and regulations of the time did not allow them to show blood, they still did an excellent job with the fight choreography itself. Silver Linings Playbook is a film that speaks to the famous quote, there is no silver lining without a cloud. The film was directed by David O. Russell and released in November of 2012. Was it a test? I kind of got that feeling, yeah. God damn it. I knew it. It was a test. The movie is about the relationship that develops between the two main characters. Through their practices for the dance competition, they develop a really abnormal relationship that is both edgy yet beautiful. I would definitely recommend this movie. First of all, it's very relatable. No one has a perfect life. Because the two main characters are very, like, wacky and... Um, untraditional, you never really know what they're going to do next. 
Overall, I think this movie had a really good message. In life, things can get a little sticky, but you have to remember that everything has a silver lining and to just be open to things because it can be very unexpected. Oh, so this is why you don't feed your dog chocolate. <laughs> John Carpenter's 1982 horror masterpiece, The Thing, is an essential movie for any film lover. It is a masterclass in suspense and was a technical marvel for its time. Our film of the hour begins with a dog being chased over the Antarctic landscape by a Swedish... Not Swedish, man, the Norwegian. Right, Norwegian helicopter. Eventually, we stumble across U.S. Research Outpost number 31. Here we are introduced to all of our main characters in a series of various cuts into different rooms in the outpost. We stop on helicopter pilot R.J. McCready, brilliantly played by Kurt Russell. The special effects are some of the greatest in movie history and still hold up very, very well today. Nothing scares me more than watching this movie on a cold winter night with all the lights out. I can still say that The Thing is one of the greatest movies of the 80s and, in my opinion, of all time. The Secret Life of Bees is an amazing movie with an even better story. It's a timeless drama that takes place during the 1960s in South Carolina. Dakota Fanning does an exceptional job playing the role of a teenage girl with an abusive father who runs away from home with her housekeeper. The role of the housekeeper, Rosalind, is played by Jennifer Hudson, whose character has a lot of attitude and personality throughout the journey. R-O-S-A-L-E-E. -E. The acting displays a well representation of how it felt to be African American during that time period and how it felt to be a white person seeing how African Americans were treated at the time. I can watch it any time, any day, and it still makes me just as emotional and the story is just as fresh as it was when I first saw it. Disney's $250 million book adaptation, John Carter of Mars, barely made profit and was generally discarded as, eh. Virginia cavalryman John Carter finds himself on Mars, where there is a Star Wars-like political war between red space Romans and blue space Romans. So Carter, he teleported there on accident. He's very lost, he's very confused. He discovers this alien race called Tharks. It's very epic, the CGI, the costuming, the design of the story, it's all great. There are these cinematic shots, sci-fi meets Lord of the Rings. The story elements and characters are very clear, intriguing, and exciting. A lot of the complaints people have about the movie have to do with it being a story from 1912, so perhaps it's not the most relatable tale, but I think the themes explored in the novel translate perfectly to the film. John Carter gets a 9 out of 10. It is one of my favorite movies of all time, and you all must watch it. Now, go.